All right, welcome back to a new touch designer tutorial. And on this one, we're going to look at infinite loops. <laughs> right, so uh, we're going to look at a feedback loop. And um, it's one of these videos which where the technique is super, super simple. And there's a lot of room to play with. And it's yeah, you could play with it all day. It's a lot of fun. So you can really do a lot with it. And um, yeah, you can use your camera input. You can use anything. So really, the, the heart of the technique is really just this, these uh, basically free operators. And I'm going to show you a couple of different examples. So first one is, well, just me messing around with the camera. <laughs> and then me messing around with the camera, but with no background. So I'm going to just change this here. So you can have like a bit of fun like this. And uh, also like just with some noise. So basically just have a noise as an input here with some lines, you know, and then repeating those movements that we're creating endlessly. And then the last one is going to be an interactive project where we basically have a, a, an empty canvas and we can like draw something on it. And it's just going to be like the motion of it's just going to be repeated endlessly. So yeah, there's many, many ways how you can use this and let's get started. So as usual, I'm going to go ahead and delete everything and start from scratch with you together. So I'm going to add a video device in here. I'm just using my Azure Connect camera and I'm going to change my signal format to 1920 by 1080, 30 hertz. So if you can, I'd highly recommend using something like 30 hertz or higher. Otherwise, it's going to be laggy. And I'm going to add a flip here just so it feels more natural. Otherwise, it kind of feels like it's uh, mirrored. So yeah, there we go. Right, then I'm going to add a null to this. And from the null, I'm going to add a feedback. To the feedback, I'm going to add a composite and just put that, like connect the null as a second input. I'm going to change my operation here to maximum. And I'm going to drag that back onto the feedback, add a, another null and call this BG. I'm going to display that in the background. Looks very weird right now, but yeah. So I'm going to add a keyboard in chop and I'm going to use that to reset my feedback so in a new version for some reason right now it doesn't work to use the poles like this so I'm just going to use the toggle so now I can press one to reset my feedback loop and you can already see this sort of trailing effect is already working because of the operation here so we can either change this to maximum or minimum both work well for this effect it's going to stay at minimum for now so if you barely move, it's just going to make your face look really strange. Um, but yeah, so what I'm going to add now is a cache. So this is really the heart of our technique. I'm just going to quickly explain what this does. So a cache takes any kind of texture input, and it's going to store that input uh, for X amount of frames. So basically, we can define the amount of frames it's going to store. So we could type in 100 here. So basically, when we're now at frame 378, 378 <laughs> um, and we would go back 100 frames we would be at frame 278 which is obviously you know if, we've, if you've moved it's going to be sort of in the past so that's what we're basically doing but with the cache size we're only defining how much touch designer or like how many frames it's gonna store if we actually want to go back in time then we've got to change the output index here so i'm just gonna like uh, write in minus 20 and press one to reset this. And you can see it doesn't really work this way. So what we've also got to do is actually reset the cache, not only the feedback. So I'm going to use the same thing here, same channel on our pulse and just press one again. Now you can already see this effect is working because basically we're just creating this feedback loop with the trail that we have in the beginning. But instead of using the frame right before, we're sort of creating this time gap by, by using this cache. I'm just going to color it to show us that it's important, maybe make it a big, bit bigger. And the, the way I kind of would like to work here is that right now we're going 20 frames back in time. And we have a cache size of 100, which is not really necessary. We don't really need to store 100 frames when we're only going back 20. So the way I like to work here is I'm just going to type in like 50 here. Right click, copy parameter, and then right click here on the output index and paste the reference. And that's going to stop the animation because right now we're just, because this doesn't go to plus, right? We have to go into the negative. So I'm just going to put a minus before. It's really all I've got to do. 
And now we have always the same cache size and output index, which I think is a good way to work here. So now I can like move around in any way here. And so basically the higher, like the bigger my cache size, the bigger the, the uh, gap is gonna be. So if I just have like five here, it's gonna be more like this trailing effect that we had in the beginning, which is also really interesting. And if we go like a hundred here, then the, if I go up like this, you can now see me, there's a quite a gap until it's being repeated. But it's super, yeah, it looks super interesting. That's also kind of weird, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can have a lot of fun with this, I'm telling you. I recently used this on a project with dancers, so that's kind of, that was just amazing. A lot of fun. So um, yeah, just mess around with uh, like the cache size here and uh, minimum, maximum, whatever works best. So obviously this is not an ideal like setup that I have right now for this. <laughs> so much, yeah, you can see how much fun this is. Um, because, well, I have got a lot of stuff going up, uh, on in the background, right? So uh, ideally you would be in a room that's well lit and that has like white background or like one color background. So you don't have all this stuff going on. So yeah, uh, let's try something here with the background though. And that's using an NVIDIA background. So if you have an NVIDIA RTX, you can use this, otherwise, unfortunately not, but it's not perfect anyways. You could also use the player index of the Kinect, but for some reason, my Kinect Azure is just kind of shit. I'm sorry, but like, I, I don't really like the Azure and I'm, I hope there will be a better device soon. Well, anyways, let's just, uh, yeah, I'm just adding an NVIDIA background blur, a threshold. I'm gonna go up to like 0.85. I'm gonna add like another blur and then add a composite here. I'm gonna pipe this in here and change transform input one, press one. And now we just have basically me without the background, but it, yeah, it doesn't work perfectly at all, as you can see, because there's still some background in there. Yeah, you can see, see my plant, but you kind of get the idea. And again, if you have just like a, a dark background or one color background, this is gonna work much better, so. Just try out like different different things. It's just more for inspiration as one. All right, so let's move away from looking at me and have a look at some noise instead. So I'm gonna add a noise top and change my resolution to 1920 by 1080 and my pixel format to 32 bit float. I'm gonna animate this noise. So I'm gonna add like ABS, <clears throat> ABS time dot seconds times 0.2 here. And I'm going to go to my noise, change period to free, harmonics to one, harmonic gain to like three, so we don't have these kind of islands. You'll see in about in a minute. And I'm going to go down with my exponent point to like point three. So basically, you, the higher you go here with the, the gain, the more you're going to have these sort of islands, if that makes sense. And now it's like if you go down with that, it's more like congruent. It's more like one thing. Anyways, let's add an edge here. Let's add the alpha, alpha one. And basically it's all kind of we need to do here. So we're basically just making lines for input. And now we can use this in here. <laughs> it's kind of weird to see me like that. Um, well, anyways, if I now pipe that in here and press one, you can see whatever is movement is happening here. Uh, you're gonna see in here. And here it's important that you actually change this to maximum. So if you have a black background and a white foreground or like a bright foreground, then you wanna change this to maximum. And let's say I take a level here and just invert this. So we have a white background and some black lines on it. You've gotta change this to minimum. So there's that's kind of the, the idea here. All right, so I'm gonna show you another example. I'm just gonna get, not show this for a second. I'm gonna add a circle here, circle top. And I'm gonna go back and just prepare this for a second. So, or I've already prepared it, but show you how to. <laughs> so for background top of my project one, type dot slash BG, then whatever screen resolution you have, you can type in here and turn borders off here. So you just have like a clean view. Oh, yeah, clean panel. Well, I'm gonna change my output resolution here to uh, parent panel size. Totally could have done that here as well. And on my circle, I'm gonna change the radius to 0 0.01 on both axes. And I'm gonna add a panel, panel chop. 
And I'm gonna select select and U and V. So basically select is telling me, if I just uh, show this here, when I click, right, and U is gonna show me uh, like X and V is gonna show me Y whenever I press my mouse. So that's basically what I wanna have. So I'm gonna use uh, U and V uh, for the positions, but for that I wanna remap them because they're going from zero to one. And for this, I actually need this to be between minus 0.5 and 0.5. So I'm just gonna type that into the range here, minus 0.5 and 0.5, and add a null. And then just use these channels on my center. And I'm gonna add some alpha, background alpha, and put that in here, press one, and let's just display that. So you can already see this is working. There's always this one like circle, that's kind of annoying. Right, but uh, it's already looking pretty cool, but we can now, to, to get rid of that, what we can do is we just use the select here on the fill color. You could also use fill alpha, but um, for some reason that makes it look weird. So just use it on a fill color. And now if I press one again, and just like draw some shape here, you can see it's being like rep repetitioned, <laughs> repeated, I mean, uh, indefinitely. So this is really a lot of fun to play around with. So you can kind of make these waves and more waves and do whatever. So you can sort of capture gestures like this. And uh, you could we could go down with the cache size. And uh, like if you change the cache size, you've always like you should always reset it. So like, otherwise it's gonna look very strange. So yeah, if we have a lower cache size, you can see there's less of gaps. So if I go higher to like 30, you can see there's more of a gap there. So let's go down to like 10 again. Let's just quickly draw a face because we can. <laughs> and um, Yeah, that's a that's a face right there. <laughs> Makes me kind of happy. Well, um, right, <laughs> that's what you can do with this. So one thing I want to show you here while while we while we're at it, you can obviously add some feedback to sort of draw this onto the screen. So uh, you can add like feedback level, comp, change this to add. Go down with this to like 0.8 maybe, and then put this back on here. And let's use our keyboard in on the feedback as well. So now if I draw this here, we can see these sort of trails, right? You could even change this to like maximum as well. Yeah, so um, works both maximum or add or uh, over technically looks a bit different well anyways uh, I guess you all know <laughs> know about this uh, there's two more things I want to show you one is that you can let's go back to the, the camera without background removal and uh, let's display this in the background and let's not have feedback all right so uh, I'm also going to change this to minimum and then I'm going to add a composite here and composite this with the original now and change this to like uh, luminance difference and then just then use that here. So you, sh you can kind of reveal the background with this. So you can also just use difference which might, might actually be a bit nicer. So you basically, if you barely move, you can see I'm just like showing the background with my mouth <laughs> and now I can like draw onto it. So it's kind of, Magic, right? And one last thing I wanted to show you. Yeah, right. There's actually, you don't have to use maximum minimum on some, like with, especially with camera input, you can also use something else. Uh, I don't want this feedback. There we go. You can also use screen. And then, but what you've got to do now is use a level. Otherwise it's going to be very bright as you can see. So you can go down with your level to like 0.7 and you contrast to like 1.3 maybe 1.2, something like that. So now you can see you get this sort of trail effect, but a bit like, I don't know, it's different than, or it feels different than just using a normal trail, like with, like we did here, right? It's like the advanced trail. <laughs> it's totally not, but yeah. 
Right, so I think we have reached the end of this video. I uh, hope you have a lot of fun with this. And uh, yeah, if you if you want, you can always like feel, feel free to tag me on Instagram at Electronaut. Feel free to follow me on Patreon for some more content or to just support me so I can do more of this weird stuff. <laughs> and yeah, thanks a lot for watching and thanks to Ekaton. That's kind of nice actually, you know, moving like this. Yeah, so <laughs> thank you uh, to everybody who's already supporting me on Patreon. It means a lot to me. And yeah, see you on the next video.